Well, I know it's, um, it does, there's such a lot about it. The whole of this year is going to be filled with her. But what I've tried to do is write about her as a woman in the context of the period in which she lived, which isn't really what people do. They go into all sorts of depth about her family and background and where she went and what she did. But they don't compare her and her life and the restrictions that there were with women of the period who had the same problems and the same restrictions. So what I've tried to do is show her living as a woman in a very difficult time. Uh, does that cover the period that she was living here in Bath, those six years? Yes, that was a very difficult time for her. There were two deaths which profoundly affected her, one of which was a very good friend um, who died on her birthday, which must have been dreadful. And then, of course, her father a few weeks later. Um, it was a very, very difficult time. She was not happy here. When she had her sister, it wasn't so bad, and when her father was alive, that was also not too bad. There were balls, and she was here in Sydney Gardens, and she loved Sydney Gardens. She didn't like the music, but she liked the gardens, and she liked walking along the canal and the nature that it represented. Have you managed to find out anything new about Jane? I think I have made some suggestions as to the illness that nearly killed her when she was a little girl. Um, I've also made some suggestions, possibly foolishly, but I don't know, about um, how she managed to um, accept a proposal of marriage from Harris Big Wither and then um, negate it the next morning. I have made what I think is a very sensible suggestion as to how that happened. And I've also made suggestions as to how she would end up if she had been living today, what sort of a woman she would be today. Was she a woman of her time? She was in some ways, but she was really a feminist. She wanted rights for women, which she wasn't allowed. One of the most pertinent things, I think, was she wanted her own travelling purse, and she simply could not travel unless she had a brother or her father as an escort. And this was very restricting, and she resented it very much, which I think is why she made Catherine Morland so independent, travelling through the night and not frightened. Did uh, Bath have a great uh, impact upon what she subsequently wrote? I mean, it's always been our understanding that she didn't write anything of substance during the six years that she was here. She had one fantastic chance. She changed um, Northanger Abbey, as it became later. It was when she was in Bath, still called Susan. She sold it for £10 to a London publisher, which must have been very empowering for her. She then started in a burst of new enthusiasm to write The Watsons, but she couldn't finish it because it was a very sad story. It reflected her own life as a spinster without any money, and that was abandoned. So there wasn't really very much time for creativity. She was also looking after her widowed mother, because after her father died, her sister was no longer in Bath, and it was down to Jane to actually look after her mother. Of course, so many of the thousands of letters she wrote were subsequently destroyed yeah. after her death. It must have been quite difficult for you to research Jane as a subject. Well, fortunately, the letters that are extant have all been collated by Deirdre Le Fay, who is one of the leading experts on Jane Austen. I've also spoken to people um, who had access to her costumes. I've gone into details of her figure, how, she was, how tall she was, how she um, was built in a sense, um, all kinds of things that books don't talk about because I'm a woman and I understand these things. So yes, I think that there'll be things there which people will perhaps not have thought about. Now, as you say, this is very much a celebratory year, 200 years yes. since Jane Austen's death. Uh, there will be many events, one of which you're organising. Yes, we've got on July the 22nd, which is a Saturday, we've got a special commemoration in St Swithin's, um, the church where her father is buried. Um, the previous St Swithin's is where her parents were married, so there's quite a, a contact there. And we are going to have a service conducted by the Reverend Michael Kenning, who was the rector at Steventon. He's coming up 
and there will be um, some of her prayers, there will be extracts in a resume of her life from her books and her letters and then we're going to end up with a dancing display because that's one of the things she loved to do. How can people find out more about that event? It'll be, the tickets will be on sale at the box office. Um, there will be, uh, it'll be on the web, the Jane Austen Society web, and it will also be on the council's web. And what about the book? When is that published? Well, that, I have my copy, and they, they will all be in the bookshops um, as of the end of this week, so Friday, and the local shops will have it. Um, and, of course, it can be bought direct from the publisher.